Here with Rain Forward, Jarrett Anderson Dolan. Jad, how's everything been going for you here during this quarantine? It's been good. Nothing, not, nothing really going on. Just trying to stay safe and, and lay low for the most part. So, Jad, where are you stationed right now? I'm in uh, Spokane, Washington. Uh, it's where I played, played junior hockey. So uh, we, we rented out a, an Airbnb here, my, my girlfriend and I, and we're, like I said, just trying to stay low and uh, stay, stay out of everybody's way. Have you, uh, have you skated or touched a hockey stick since the season came to a suspension uh, about a month ago? I have not skated. I've, I've touched a hockey stick just to, just to ship it to, to where I was in Spokane because I didn't have enough, uh, enough room in my, in my uh, Nissan Altima. <laughs> did, you, uh, did you do that drive, the two of you guys? Yeah, so we, we did um, 17 hours from L.A. to Seattle, and then Seattle to, to – we stayed there for a little bit, and then Seattle Spokane's about four hours, so quite a bit of driving lately. What did you guys do to entertain yourselves in that ride? Anything that you listen to? Uh, a couple podcasts, um, some good music. My girlfriend uh, has, some, has some good playlists, so she was, she was on the Oxcord for the most part, but not often really, just kind of doing our thing. And, yeah, a couple podcasts, but nothing too crazy. Now that you guys are posted up, what are you doing to kind of stay in shape during this time? Uh, exercises, running, what have you been into? Um, just as, as much as I can. I mean, um, you, I have like an ac access to like a track, so I've been doing that. But at the same time, I, you know, I don't really want to be going outside too much. So just been doing that like once a week kind of thing. And then I uh, just got some like a weight vest, uh, just trying to keep the legs strong and uh, stay in shape a little bit. But uh, there's, I mean, with what we have, just trying to do as much as, as much as you can. It's nice to, nice to get out for a run. I think for yeah. me, when you can just to uh, evade the apartment for, for a little bit, but you know, obviously yeah. you don't want to make a habit of doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Definitely makes you maybe appreciate, you know, those little bit, little bit of time that you do get out of the apartment. Yeah, absolutely. I, I went out to the, to the track this morning and it uh, just being outside, you know, makes you happy and not, uh, not being cooped up in a, in a small little place is definitely nice. So we have some, uh, some questions for you from the fans. Uh, they submitted it through us uh, on social media and the website and that kind of stuff. So let me hit you with them. Perfect. Uh, first one, you know, before everything kind of came to a halt here, Rain were playing extremely well. You guys were putting together a lot of wins, a lot of points, you know, it was the belief in the room that you guys were going to make a push for the playoffs. Um, had the season continued as scheduled. Yeah, absolutely. That was our, our goal from, from the start of the season, just to, to get into playoffs. Um, I think that's every team's goal. And, you know, once you get in, anything can happen. So obviously playing some, some good hockey as of late before things came to a halt. Um, I think it was just the, the belief in the dressing room. I think we finally started to, to find our game consistently, um, kind of found our identity, which has been there kind of throughout the season. But uh, in those last 15, 20 games, whatever you want to call it, uh, we definitely found that that consistency and, and definitely everybody was, was buying in, um, you know, up until those last couple games games against Colorado but I mean that point I, you know our record showed that what, whatever we were doing was was working and uh you know it was pretty pretty cool feeling uh to be a part of the team that that's clicking like that and um you know obviously um before it stopped we were feeling good but um you know right now everyone's just you know trying to trying to do what they can to um to stay in shape and uh, we'll see what happens. What was your favorite part of being in LA, the South Bay, Ontario, whatever you want to call it? What was like the the coolest part of that? Uh, just the, I think the weather. Um, it's kind of crazy going from from Spokane and, and Calgary, Alberta, where it snows and it's freezing cold to to being in LA, where you're you're right by the beach. And I mean, it's the winters there are like 55, 55 degrees. So definitely a little different for me. But I think you know, I like pretty active guy even when we're even during the season, like to go out for walks and, and bike rides or whatever it is. So to, to be able to do that, um, you know, all season round, even in the winter is, is definitely nice because I uh, definitely didn't have, to have uh, access to that when I was playing in, in Spokane or Calgary. Coming from New York, I definitely don't miss like going out and scraping off my windshield before yeah. I go to work in the mornings. That's something yeah. I will Keen not miss. Car too. Yeah. Oh, like you got a, I got an automatic car starter like my last year in New York. So it'd be great. Like you heat it up. It'd be nice and warm when you got in. Yeah. And now it's just like, oh, well, I don't even need it. Yeah. I didn't even have the automatic car starter. So I was 
I was going out there in the freezing cold and starting it up Ooh. and then going back inside. I've done that several times, so was, yeah. uh, definitely don't miss that. Yeah. Um, with the rain this year, we wore a lot of specialty jerseys. Did you have a favorite jersey that we wore this year? Yeah, I think the um, the the cancer jerseys, the uh, the purple ones. That's um, something that hits uh, close to home with me. I've had a few uh, family family members and uh, you know close friends, family members, and and friends of my my own that have been affected by cancer. And uh, I think you know for the most part, everyone has. So. Um, I thought the jerseys were really well designed. They look great, but uh, I think just the fact that they they hit home a little bit more for for me personally uh, made it my favorite. Put that on the graphic designer's resume. There, players, yeah. uh, the players, really well designed. So yeah, <laughs> pumping his tires a little bit. Um, yeah. Who, uh, which teammate with the rain uh, would you say you were closest to? Maybe away from the rink this year. Uh, Mikey Anderson. Um, we live close together. Um, we, we would drive to on game days to Ontario. We'd drive uh, every game together. Uh, we were roommates on the road, so spent a lot of time together. He's just, um, you know, obviously before he went up to the Kings, um, but, you know, just a, just a great guy. Um, you know, one of the better teammates I've had, just uh, cares about everybody. And uh, for, you know, being a younger guy on the team, he was definitely a, a leader. And I think everybody kind of kind of saw that and, uh, sh- you know, showed respect for him. And he definitely – definitely Aaron that just the way he carries himself and um, the way he, he competes in games. But, uh, you know, he was, he was probably the closest guy. I mean, uh, had uh, great relationships with everybody on that team, but uh, just because we're the, the same age and we kind of got drafted together and knew him a little bit uh, from development camp and that we were definitely, he was definitely the closest guy. Was it a little easier to assimilate? Like you, Mikey, you guys both came in as 20 year olds, you and Mikey, along with a lot of other guys, was it easier to maybe make that transition because there were so many other guys in the same boat as you? Yeah, absolutely. That definitely helps uh, just comfort wise, having guys that are that are the same age and um, you know, kind of in the same situation, just uh, trying to get better a young guy on a, on a team with some, some, you know, a pretty young team, but with some some older guys that have been been around for a while and uh, know what it takes. It's uh, it's definitely comforting to have a, a couple guys in that uh, same situation as you. When you're in a more regular routine in season, what did you like to do away from the rink? Uh, I know practice is taking up most of your morning, maybe the early afternoon, but after that, what did you do in your own time? Um. Tried to stay active a little bit. I mean, when you get home from the rink, you're kind of tired, uh, especially if you know, our scheduling and, and travel and uh, playing as many games as we do. But, um, you know, I like to go for walks, uh, go for dinner with, with Mikey and, and some of the younger guys. Um, it's funny, we, we went out golfing a couple of times, which again is something that I uh, definitely wouldn't have access to in some of those uh, colder climates. But, uh, you know, in LA, you're lucky enough to, to have access to that. So did that a couple of times, but for the most part, just, just kind of lay low and take advantage of, uh, of my rest time. Do you have any shows that you're binge watching or getting into either now or that you got into uh, during the season? Yeah, um, I was into uh, Animal Kingdom. I like that show. Um, we just started uh, Ozark um, here, my girlfriend and I. Uh, we we did that uh, Tiger King, which is yeah. entertaining, yeah. kind of a, a stupid show, but uh, pretty funny seeing, seeing some of those characters. But I know I, I have a list so long of, of shows that people <laughs> told me to watch. I'm I'm falling behind, so just trying to, to bang it out as much as possible, especially with the time we have on our hands now. <laughs> this is the best time, right? Like, yeah. what else are you doing? Yeah, you don't have any excuse to to not to just be sitting on your couch. <laughs> I've heard good things about Ozark. We were talking about it on the the latest podcast. Cam is getting into or finishing up Ozark, I think. So oh yeah, he, he was a big fan. Rave reviews. Yeah, we we only start, we watched the first episode of season one, so we're a little bit behind. But the first episode was good, so I think we'll we'll stick to it. What'd you think about the Tiger King? Did you like it? Yeah, I mean, it's, I like kind of stupid stuff like that. That's entertaining. I mean, I thought the the whole time there's well, actually, I don't want to I don't want to spoil it for people <laughs> that haven't seen it. But you no, know, it's just just kind of funny. I mean, just they they live their own life over there, so it's it's pretty funny to see. Yeah, we watched it last week and I, it was entertaining. You know, it was yeah. obviously pretty stupid, but it definitely, definitely entertained me to see. Like, I had, had no idea about that lifestyle or, you know, yeah. those no, kinds for, of places. For sure. um, your call up to the NHL uh, this year or in your time there last year, what was your favorite part of, you know, being a part of the Kings and playing in that league? 
Um, I think it's just, you know, you work so hard to, to get to that point and for it to, to finally be there and you're playing in some of those buildings, um, you know, that you've been against players that you've watched growing up. It's, uh, it's exactly where you want to be, but just the work that goes into it for, for everyone that gets to, to play at that level, whether it's four games or, you know, a thousand games, then it's, uh, you know, the, the guys that get there are usually the, the harder working ones. So it's, uh, I think it's just kind of knowing that your work ethic is, uh, has paid off, but, you know, like I said, just playing against some of those players you've watched growing up and, you know, idolized and uh, still watch to this day, even, you know, watching the playoffs and, and watching a lot of hockey, you know, we're all still, still fans. So to kind of be out there and the, uh, kind of the the big league and the the main show is a pretty pretty exciting feeling who's the best guy you lined up against um or was there like a guy you saw like when you were out there playing you're like wow like this guy is you see him on tv but it's like wow this guy is good yeah i had a couple i um this last call up i i took i was out there with claude Giroux a couple times uh and took a couple face-offs against him and he's uh he's one of the better face-off guys in, in the league. So I, uh, I think he, he cleaned me pretty good. I think I <laughs> over three and didn't even stand a chance. So that was kind of an eye opener. And then, you know, Steve, <clears throat> Steven Stamkos, uh, Nikita Kucherov. Um, yeah. I mean, every team has some, some pretty amazing players. Obviously it's the best league in the world, but you know, there's a couple guys that, that stand out a little bit more. You play the lightning. You could just go down the list, right? Like yeah, it seems exactly. like they, at the forward side, you go five, six deep of superstars. Yeah, their third line is could be a you know a second or first line on on a lot of other NHL teams, so it's pretty yeah, cool. No kidding. Um, from October to March, uh, what did you feel like was the part of your game that you improved the most uh, in your first pro year? Uh, I think just my my overall game. I think the defensive side of it. I that's something I've always kind of focused on. But as you move up levels, it gets you know it gets more challenging and you know it's better players so I think just the little parts of that defensive side like you know getting good angles um you know me being a centerman is definitely an eye-opener on just uh, you know how hard face-offs are and in pro hockey you definitely need to get better at that and definitely something I'm going to focus on this summer but uh I definitely improved in that that area uh, compared to the beginning of the season but I think just the little things you know worked a lot with with Jared Stoll watching video um, and it's great to have a guy like that that's, um, you know, similar games, um, myself and him, and um, definitely definitely a great tool to, to take advantage of. But, you know, just working on those little things, I think that's the same for everyone. But I, um, I think that was kind of the biggest thing that then proved throughout the year for myself. And on the other note, um, you kind of mentioned it there, but the biggest thing you're looking to work on uh, in your game this summer as you look into, into next year. Um, I think, I think face-offs is for sure up there. Um, you know, if I want to stay at center and, um, you know, as far as I know, I think that's, um, where, where the Kings like me most, then, you know, I got to get better there. Um, but I think the, the offensive side of it, I think, uh, just working on, on my release needs to get a lot quicker. Didn't, uh, didn't have the season I wanted to offensively. Um, I think just, a lot of that is, is quick release and, and hitting my spots. You know, I, I miss the net uh, way more than I should. Um, so just work on that, shoot a lot of puck, pucks this summer. Um, and also just kind of working on getting into those areas. So just watching some clips and f- watching some, some goal scorers and where they are to, to get opportunities. Uh, I think that'll, that'll help me for next season. That's uh, definitely something I'm focusing on. And the last one I had, um, did you have a favorite moment or favorite memory from the season, whether it be in the AHL with the rain or in the NHL with the Kings? Yeah. I mean, I think that that first game I, I got called up uh, with the Kings is definitely, definitely, you know, personally a, a great moment. Um, you know, my first, first goal uh, down with the rain is, was some, was a special first pro goal. Um, and I think it was a team with the rain. I think just the, you know, I'm, it wasn't really an exact moment I'd say I think it's just kind of when we when we started stringing things together and then winning a couple you know when we went on that that little stretch before uh this this break happened uh that was definitely a great feeling just you know the amount of fun we were having in the dressing room how confident we were that's always fun to be a part of so I mean as a team not really any specific moment just kind of that that little stretch we went on uh, got us back into you know a real serious uh, playoff contender and um 
I think that was kind of the, the moment that stuck out for me. I don't know if there was like a specific date, but there was a pretty clear like turning point for the rain yeah. this year when like it went from like, you know, a lot of up and downs to like a trending upward line on the graph. And it seemed like once you guys hit that point, it just like took off. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. I don't, I don't know exactly when that was, but I agree completely. There was a definitely just a switch in, in moods and confidence in the dressing room. And it felt like no, whatever team we went up against, we were going to win. And uh, it didn't really matter. It didn't really matter who it was.